Welcome back into the Pulse of Willie and Al. How's it going today, bro? Woo, pretty good, man. Pretty good. I uh, woke up this morning, and uh, as per New England tradition, it was the first time I do scrape ice off my car. Oh, nice. There we go. Yeah, October, <laughs> baby. yeah that's, that's when you know you're really feeling it in the fall. So, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, man, things have been crazy. Like, it's starting to get that cold chill here, too. So, enjoying it. I, I love the cold weather. So, good to, good to be cold feeling that. Turkey. If you don't mind me asking. All right. So it gets cold, but not quite snow cold. Uh, maybe they'll get one snowfall and kids are like, oh my God, it's snowing outside. Like it's, it's very yeah. rare here. So, uh, especially in Istanbul being a, a, you know, a, a city on the water. So, sure. um, but we are back and this is episode 59 today. That's right. This is our 59th get me another pint episode yeah and that's right get me another pint and let's enjoy the fall season let's enjoy some football some october classic baseball let's do it so uh and if you need a refill we got you so uh hopefully gonna give you a nice fill today on some of the stuff we got going on with sports um and i think we're gonna honestly need a few more pints to deal with just all the injuries that we've experienced this year in fantasy so far uh it's real it's been kind of rough so uh (laughs) bear with us buckle in and we got some good stuff coming to you guys today um i know i haven't mentioned it in a while but like don't forget to like the video and smash that subscribe button because we we definitely need it we love the the fans that we have and uh we appreciate your support we really do um but back on to business right we got lots of stuff to talk about today ranging from the crazy baseball playoffs to everything going on in nfl week six um just for uh to point it out to the fans uh we are recording this tuesday morning in america uh well and tuesday evening in istanbul so (laughs) here we go boys uh so let's let's get going let's start off with major league baseball right the dodgers end up taking that series against the padres and i mean this is the big thing i i think i mentioned it to you at some point i talked to my dad about it this weekend but did you think the controversy with this whole machado uh throw throwing at roberts do you think that doomed the padres in this because it seemed like at that point like they were dancing after game one and it seemed like a little bit in game two and then all of a sudden that balloon popped and it was over i i read I read, so after, what was it, game, I can't remember if it was game three that the Padres won, but, like, you'll notice after that game they, like, celebrated, uh, or at least, like, Fernando Tatis was. Mm -hmm. Dancing and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and it turns out Tatis thought this was a three-game series, (laughs) not a five-game series. Wait, really? (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the rumor going around, yeah, which is hilarious. Math is Uh, hard. Yeah, no, man, Dodgers bullpen showed up. Yeah. That's, I, like, the, their biggest weakness in the regular season became their biggest strength. Yeah, man, it, it yeah. was, uh, I hate to say it because I didn't really have anything against the Padres till I saw kind of the way they acted in the postseason, but they acted like a team you would typically expect to be there their first time. And the Dodgers yeah. acted like a team that you typically expect have been there before, understand it, and dealt with it. So... Um, interesting because now they're, you know, uh, in the middle of a, a, a battle right now with the Mets, but we're going to get to that in a minute. I uh, just wanted to give a quick little shout out to the Detroit Tigers. Right. Uh, and I know that like their season ended a uh, very young characteristic of Scooball to, to give up that grand slam. And honestly, like I, I joked with my dad, cause I felt like every time I watch a sporting event and it's a team that I start rooting for, they automatically just tank and do terribly. And so I feel like I'm a bad luck charm when it comes to that. But uh, things happened. They had a really great season. And I I don't like you could just see the pain in his eyes when that happened. Yeah. Felt really bad for him, man. Like, (laughs) it's just everything everything lined up for the Tigers, too. They had Scooble going in a clinching game. You're like, cool. 
Scooble's going to just pitch lights out for like seven innings and he made two bad pitches. That's really what it boiled down to. Yeah. And like nothing you can do with that. And that doesn't take away from the hell of a season Detroit had, hell of a season that Scooble had. Like, Scooble's going to win Cy Young. And like, you know what's interesting, too, Al? They literally have everybody coming back. Everybody. Yeah. They have such a young team. I was reading they have a guy coming up through the minors right now that's, like, literally they say their best, best prospect in the last 10 years, and he hasn't even made it to the top of the minors yet. So, like, yeah. he, he's going to be primed and ready to come in next year. It just, I don't know. I, I think things are looking up for them. And they are, from what I'm reading, an organization that's run the right way. So, big things happening in the city of Detroit. Yeah. Big things. Yeah. Um, but, listen, uh, on to the teams that are still there. We're already two games into the NL series, one into the AL series, but... Uh, let's get cooking on this, man. We got the Yankees. They're up 1-0 on Cleveland. Um, they play their next game tonight. Uh, and it's Tanner... Uh, Bibby. Bibby. I didn't want to mispronounce that. I'll let you do that. Uh, and then no, that's okay. Garrett... I mispronounce a lot of things. So that's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Garrett Cole. And they're playing in New York. So uh, how do you see this game going? How do you think it's going to end up? I mean, this could have worked out better for the as much as I hate to say this, this could have worked out better for the Yankees. Uh, Rodon last night pitched pretty much a gem. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about it after the game. He said uh, he he watched Cole in the last series kind of be a robot, <laughs> kind of like kind of like the no emotions thing. And he, you know, he's a guy that gets kind of fired up a lot of the times. And uh, yeah, he just went out there and kind of pitched a gem for the Yankees, man. Mm -hmm. um, and this couldn't, like I said, couldn't have worked out better. You know, have Cole going tonight. If you can go up 2 0, going back to Cleveland, like that's that's what you want, man. That's exactly that's what, you want, what as, much yeah. as, that, as much as that pains me. Like, yeah, you know? it's got to be rough to see. Uh, how, how are you feeling so far on this series? Like what you've seen out of the Yankees, what you've seen out of Cleveland? I, I, I think that Cleveland has the talent. Um, they just. Everything that worried me about the Yankees with that lineup with Soto, with Soto, Judge, and Stan last night came to fruition. Mm -hmm. What you saw from them last night was just that lineup just wreaked havoc. That those three players wreaked havoc last night. And mm -hmm. like that's when they when they traded for Soto, this is kind of what they were hoping would happen. And if this is just gonna continue happening, like there's not really much Cleveland can do. Mm -hmm. Because like Cleveland's got a really good bullpen, but their rotation is not is not great, and their bullpen's been leveraged pretty hard already. And I really thought that Cleveland was going to win this series, but like after kind of watching them last night, like boy, they just kind of came out flat, and like they don't really have any starting pitching options. Like at least the Yankees have Cole, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and like Rodon's been like kind of decent for them, but like. Cleveland has a really good bullpen, but that's – they don't really have any starters. You know what's interesting, man? And, like, I kind of saw a little bit of this, like a snippet of it in the Detroit game, uh, in, in game five there. Their manager is very stoic. He he doesn't show a lot of emotion on his face. Yeah. And I, I didn't really know that much about him, to be honest. But I think that – He's that way as a player, too. Yeah, it, it goes it, – I feel like that translates a bit to the team. And being like, because yeah. I saw Detroit go up in that game one nothing, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Like, things are, are going to get going. Yeah. And he didn't panic. He didn't worry. He just said, listen, we're going to start taking guys out and, you know, making pitching changes. And they did that. And he remained calm. And he's like, yo, my guys are going to gonna start hitting. And and they did. And th yeah. that's the one thing that I can say about Cleveland that I, I saw, and granted, things went right for them in Game 5, but to have to win two games in a row in a series is very difficult. And for them to be able to do that, not only in Detroit, but then to know you've got to play against Detroit's best starter and you still fight through it, I mean, they're grinders, man. They really are. And if there's a team that I wouldn't mind seeing in the in the World Series, it, it would probably be the Indians. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the Guardians. To, yeah, I mean... To I'm going to get canceled now. <laughs> Yeah, oh my gosh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, with you, they they played that elimination game, game five on a sat on what Saturday, and then had to turn around, fly to New York, and play Monday. Like yes, yeah. 
you know, I've got to imagine that there's a little bit of a, man, we're tired. Like, yeah, from celebrating too. Like, there's a lot of emotion in that as well. You know, it's, yeah, I I think Cleveland will bounce back though. I Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be okay. They've, they've been a great team all year. And like, I I think this is still going to be a series. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But tonight's pivotal. They got to, they got to get to Cole early. Oh, man, that would be great to but, see that happen, wouldn't it? Yeah, and, but apparently, also, John Carlos Stanton is apparently a playoff god, apparently. Yeah. I don't like. I don't know what that is, because yeah. he didn't do shit in the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those guys, Jesus. right? Maybe the Red Sox will sign him. So. God, no. <laughs> no. They're really good at doing it. You have hope for once. I don't want that guy. Yeah. Uh. All right, so uh, let's. Who do I, I'm sorry. Who do you have for the prediction for this? Who, who do you oh, have? I have. Uh, I still have Cleveland. I think it's be Cleveland in seven. Okay. All right, and I'll yeah. stay. I'll stick with Cleveland in seven too because I, I really I like that watching that team. Uh, and you know, I don't. know. I just don't man. want the Yankees to win. I just don't want that to happen. Yeah, I, I'm not against that. Uh, and there's a non-zero chance that I, you know. <laughs> there's a non-zero chance about that happening, right? Like they, they've got a, a good chance to be able to win going up one, nothing, but I don't know. Anyhow, uh, let's move into the NL. So we've got the Mets and the Dodgers. They're tied up now at one apiece. Uh, and I, I feel like we've seen two very different games played thus far in this series. Like the Dodgers rocked the Mets in the first game, nine, nothing. Uh, but last night was a different story with the Mets coming back, winning seven, three, I wouldn't describe it as a rocking, uh, but, uh, what are yeah. your thought? What are your thoughts on on the series so far? Well, last night's game just turned on uh, Vientos hitting the grand slam. Yeah, that's, that's really that was really. By, by the way, are there not a, a ton of grand slams being hit? Yeah, and I, I like yeah, the for it. yeah. I, I mean, it's awesome. It's great playoff baseball. Uh, but it just seems like a lot of that is happening right now. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, so I guess like. So what had happened was he was he he was like mad because uh it and rightfully so for the record. I, I just want to state this. They intentionally loaded the bases, they intentionally walked Lindor to get to him, <laughs> which makes sense because Lindor's just hit everything. And he also was yeah, he's he's had a lot of home runs lately yeah, too. So then he Vientos took it personally mm-hmm. and hit a grand slam. And correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, Lindor was the one that hit the grand slam against Atlanta. So Yeah. Uh yeah. yeah. Uh, love to see it yeah love to see it hey no we don't so uh but game three listen we got bueller versus severino uh in in new york so like i mean it's it's kind of crazy that we could end up with a subway series again and i know you don't want that but like oh i i'm cool with the mets winning i'm cool with the mets winning i just don't want the yankees oh I'm, i'm not cool with the mets winning i'm not cool with the yankees winning i'm not cool with the mets winning uh, I'm all right with the Dodgers winning because most of my favorite players ended up going <laughs> side with the Dodgers, right? That's like, fair. Yeah, if yeah. Freeman gets another one, I wouldn't care. I'd love to see Otani get a ring, right? Sure. Uh, but um, my biggest question for you is in, in this series right now, who do you see? Because tonight's game, talk about pivotal. It's very pivotal that there yeah. could be a big swing in this series depending on who wins tonight. Um who do you think is going to be the difference maker tonight? Uh, I'm sorry. It, it's going to be tomorrow for this team, right? Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Now, so they're now, it's now every other night. Mm-hmm. So for it, tonight's, tonight's the Cleveland game and tomorrow is the Dodgers. Yep. Yeah. So um, who do you have from being the difference maker? I, I still think, first of all, the Dodgers are going to the Dodgers are going to go into the into City Field and that place has been rocking for the playoffs. Yeah. I think you're going to you're going to see that again tomorrow night. Um I I still think the Dodgers like I know Otani's never played in the playoffs till this year, but like you got a bunch of battle-tested dudes in these playoffs that like I, I think they're going to be able to handle it. And I think that like while Bueller has not been great this year you know it's it's better than it is better what the Mets are rocking out there like yeah. Severino like Severino has been fine but like I I just I really think that like this is a game this this is the reason you have Otani Betts and Freeman for a game like game three mm-hmm. where you need them all to show up you need them to produce mm-hmm. they did it in game one they didn't really do it in game two so I'm I'm, I'm thinking game three 
And Freeman's banged up a little bit too, which is kind of you know Betts is coming back from injury still, trying to trying to work through all of that. But you wouldn't guess that Freeman's banged up. He's hitting three fifty in the playoffs. Yeah, I know so. that that's crazy. I'd love to be injured in batting that. It's like oh, yeah. he'd probably be batting a thousand if he was it wasn't that, hurt. That dude was in a walking boot the last game of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But but it's it's stuff like that though. Like that's why you get the one seed and you get the week off mm-hmm. so you can rest and be healthy. Yeah. Like yeah. So I, I think I have the Dodgers uh tomorrow night. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Dodgers, like I said, uh them in the World Series wouldn't wouldn't bother me one bit. Um I know it yeah, hasn't I, been I have a, the Dodgers in six in this series. Yeah, well. it, it hasn't been a storybook season for them this year. It should have been on paper, but uh paper isn't always what happens, so I wouldn't mind seeing things go their way. Uh, what's What's funny is this isn't a storybook season, but they still won ninety eight games. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, the prediction still, was like, oh, they could win one hundred and twenty, and it's like, yeah, and they're still gonna host the World Series if they make it because they had the best record in the league. Nice. Like, yeah. yeah. So it's crazy, and that's with us, you know, bashing them for the last couple months, being like, "Well, they could get taken over for the division and stuff," right? Like, it, yeah. could, it was looking scary there for a little bit. Uh, but anyhow, anything else you wanted to mention about baseball before we move forward here? Uh, no, no, it's just it's nice. It's nice having baseball on every night. I like now that we're getting to the point where it's just one game a night. Yeah, that division series, I was just like tired watching three games a night. Yeah, that's like, I just. It's a lot. It's a lot of yeah. emotion. It's a lot of psychological toll on you too. Uh getting I, up for all I of enjoy, those games. I enjoy watching the playoffs when the Red Sox aren't in it because it's stress free to me. Yeah. Yeah, I that is stress. not that that is not um <laughs> I like that you mentioned that it's stress free. Because yeah. it's it's very different, and we'll you'll have to remind me to bring it up when we talk about fantasy. But yeah, very interesting watching things when there's stress involved, uh, yeah. as as opposed to when you're not. Um, yeah, no, I sleep I sleep better. Like oh I yeah, for like three weeks I don't for three weeks think every day like oh man this is gonna be it. Like <laughs> it's great, it's great. I can just live yeah. my life normally and just feel good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh let's move on. We got the NFL, right? Breaking news that came through today. Uh Devontae yeah. to the Jets. And uh like really in my mind it was really the only place he could go. Uh right? Most teams had bailed out uh just because it it seemed like the the Raiders were asking for something a bit too high and it's it's amazing, man. You hear Belichick talk and it's you just get so much perspective in terms of the game and the front office and understanding where players are valued and stuff like that. Uh, very interesting to hear him kind of break that down on Pat McAfee yesterday. And sure yeah. enough, the Jets end up snagging him, you know, after they lose to the Bills last night. Uh, they bring him in. Uh, and I just, you know, I, I kind of wanted your perspective on that. So it looks like with the deal, so it looks like it's going to be a conditional third round pick that could be a second round pick. Uh, but for that to happen, Adams either has to be a first or second team all pro, or he has to be on the Jets active roster for the AFC title game or Super Bowl. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I did, I'm gonna say a thing. I don't know how much this really helps the Jets. And I, and I just say because like Aaron Rodgers last night post game, you know what he did? He threw everybody under the bus. Yeah. It didn't take responsibility. Like the, the 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 only way he even kind of quote took responsibility was like we gave that game away. Yeah, yeah, dude, you played like ass down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Like he, yeah, he just like he threw receivers under the bus. Like he was just like, oh, like Garrett. I think it was Garrett Wilson. Like, like tripped and fell. No, it was Mike Williams at the end of oh, the Mike, game. Oh, there, Mike Williams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trips and falls, and it honestly, and I hate to say it. I mean, you know this. I I hate even bringing this up because I don't want to give any credit to it at all. But like, yeah. dude, you underthrew him. That's why he yeah. had to come back to catch the ball. <laughs> like, yeah. stop being yeah. forty five years old trying to play the in the NFL, dude. Seriously. Hey, you know what? Maybe do better than go four for twelve on on third down. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And like, which is shocking considering how well they were running the ball with Brees Hall. Yeah. Shocking, dude. But. Yeah. 
Although I don't know if you caught the end of the first half. First half. No. Threw another hail mary and got it. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know how he keeps doing it. Like I don't. I don't, I don't know, I've man. Seen more completed hail marys in my lifetime from him than I ever could have imagined from anybody. Yeah. Like he makes that a regular play. Yeah, I. I don't know, man. I spent the rest of that game. I got to bring it up now. I spent the rest of that game. I was up 15 points in fantasy last night, and the guy wow. had Brees Hall going, and I had Dalton Kincaid. And Brees Hall ended up score like when I woke up at like 5:45 this morning. Brees Hall was one point ahead. Uh, his sure. team was one point ahead with Brees Hall. Dalton Kincaid catches another ball. I go ahead by one. Then Brees, the Jets get the ball back. Brees Hall goes ahead, and he's winning by 0. .2 points. And I'm saying yeah. to myself, if this is the way it ends, as I have guys on my starting roster like Trey Tucker that put up zero yesterday, like I'm going to lose my mind. And thank God he won by three, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to deal with it. Um, yeah. But, man... Real rough to to see that, and I just feel like I uh, I don't know, man. It it's it it's stressful when you're watching fantasy. I wake up in the middle of the night, check my phone. I'm like, this should not be the way life I is. Had to, so I I had to sweat out the uh, I just sweat out the Monday night game for the Bennett League. Yeah, so I'm going I'm against Muggsy this week, and the only players we had left, we both I had Buffalo's defense, and he had the Jets defense. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's which is scary because it yeah. could go either way there. It really could yeah. have. Yeah, and oh, I, I pulled it out by like three points, so it was, yeah. it was good. But like, boy, yeah, that feels good. So don't worry, we'll, we'll give you we'll oh, give you your praise. Early, just an extra point. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, this is how it's gonna be. God damn it. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love losing to death, but I don't. I, I'm tired of losing. Yeah. I'm tired of losing. Well, listen, we'll we'll see what happens with this Devontae Adams trade, right? And how much better it's going to make the Jets. Yes, him and Rodgers have the rapport, but don't forget that was two years ago now. Uh, two years and change yeah. ago that, that, that he was putting up, you know, 18, 20 touchdowns, something like that in a season. So, uh, you know, it remains to be seen. Do I think they got better? Absolutely adding an, an all-pro receiver. But how? just how much better? I don't know, man. I, I really don't. Yeah. Um, now... In terms of the and, and this is the thing, past this year, like what does that mean? Is Rogers gonna come back again next year? I you know, I, I don't know. Anyhow, but let's let's talk about some of the fun games that we saw. First, Ravens versus Commanders. Like Whoa, wow, that game was fun. Th that game oh, first of all, they showed a ton of that on red zone, and I was so happy because it was just yeah. it never felt like the commanders were gonna win that game, but you were nervous that they were hanging around, right? Like it was always like, okay, well they're within ten. They weren't. Yeah. They the the Ravens weren't up by more than that. Um. Bal yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Baltimore just kind of you know what they did was they committed to being like you know what, Jane Daniels beat us with your arm. Mm -hmm. You're not going to beat us with your legs. Yeah. And they committed to that. Like it. Washington only ran for fifty two yards. Which yeah. is unlike them. Like, Very unlike them. Washington. Yeah, they yeah. are. They are. Um, but the know, thing was, was like, Jane Daniels, like, he, he ate some sacks because he had to. Uh, he still looks good, though. And he gave, he gave his chance, his team a chance to win. Yeah, they just, man. Like, just didn't have enough. And, and that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, he was able to see how his team's going to stack up against an, one of the better teams in the AFC, right? And again, I'm... I don't want to admit that, right? I'm still not fully sold on the Ravens, but I went back and watched some film this weekend on them because yeah. last week I felt like I was a little bit unfair with some of the stuff I was saying about them. And I'm like, dude, what am I missing with this team? And you know what it was? From I went back and watched all of the YouTube highlights on all five of their games this this year. Yeah. Every single one that, that came through, what they were doing in the first two and a half games, almost three games, was they were not using Derrick Henry properly. And no. now now what they're doing is they're lining his ass up eight yards back, <laughs> and they're giving him a running head start. And these linemen, dude, I mean, just to clarify, like the linemen are blocking their butts off for him. And mm -hmm. I'm not even going to say that the linemen are great, 
but they're blocking just be a little bit extra because they think like this guy has a chance to house it on every play. But like yeah. him him lining up eight yards back is just unfair. That's like giving Tyreek Hill, you know, in motion a running head start. It's just yeah. not fair. Like it's like a freight train running. It's not fair. So when I see and, that, and I'll tell you every time they needed to get a first down, they're yeah. like, hey, you know what? Derrick Henry, run yeah. this for five. Dude, like, he he's a stud, man. He yeah. is a stud. And I just think about all the poor souls that are trying to feed their family and just get run over by him. Yeah. Just get run over and by it makes, him. And it makes Lamar better. It does. Because now, because what's happening is like teams that are playing Baltimore are putting eight in the box. Yeah. To stop their because they have to be honest about the run now. And that's where guys like Zay Flowers are going off for nine for 132. In like, in the first half, but then they didn't go back to that. So do you see what I mean when I'm telling you I'm yeah. not sold on them? It's not that they're not playing great. Uh, and I don't even think they are. I think they're playing good enough to win. But like when you have a guy go nine for 132 in the first half and then he doesn't catch a ball the rest of the game, like what is going on there? What is happening? You know, Mark- yeah, okay, yeah. Mark Andrews started to come alive in the second half. But, like, dude, you can't find a way to get your best receiver the ball in the second half? What? Come on, he caught nine well, balls in the first half. In, in fairness, Washington was double covering him a lot. Zay Flowers a lot. But I'm just saying, they, dude, like, any of these dudes, you take the best receivers, Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, yeah. you could double cover them all day. You scheme them open. Whether it's a screen, yeah. whatever it is, get the ball in their hands. Like, I just, I don't know. It's like they, it's every single game with them. I feel like it's a tale of two halves. They're like, yeah. uh, hey, you yeah. know what? Let's see what else we can do second half that we didn't do the first half. And that's why it's frustrating to watch them, for me at least. Now, I, I know their fans are probably happy, as dumb as they are. But um, it just, I don't know. For <laughs> for me, it just, it's bothersome, dude. Like, yeah. I don't want to... I, I, I don't know, man. I, you know what? I, th- I this is where you and I always kind of like disagree is with Baltimore this year. <laughs> to me, I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because they're running for 200 yards a game. Yeah. And they're I, just smashing it down people's throats. Yeah. I, I just, like, and I, you know what? To me, what really sit, did it was the, the Cincinnati game last week where they had to go to overtime. Uh, they, they had they were down ten in the down ten in the fourth, like that was that to me showed me I'm like okay, but these guys can these guys are for these guys are for real to me. Okay, but did that show you more about how good Baltimore's offense is or how bad Cincinnati's defense was? That's the thing. Uh, it's like okay, yeah, Derrick yeah. Henry ran fifty yards in overtime, but that game never should have gotten past Cincinnati controlling the ball there because they should have kicked that field goal. Yeah. Like, and I know well, what it should have could have, but I, you know, I just, I don't know. It's frustrating for me. I, I, I actually say, I think with that, I think it's their offense was pretty good because I just go back to that Lamar play where he stiff arms the D line yeah. four times to get open. And then fires a rocket. <laughs> yeah, the likely for that touchdown. He like, did, man. He really did. There's only one guy in the league that's making that play. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, two, because Mahomes. Mahomes. Mahomes, too. Mahomes yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, yeah. right? Except Mahomes yeah. is throwing it behind his back. Yeah, I know. Or like under his leg, and it's it's completed for a touchdown. You're like, how is this happening right now? <laughs> oh, man. Except this year, he's like, now half the time those balls get picked, right? Like, it's, yeah. I don't know. Well, let's yeah. uh, let's let's talk about some some good stuff, right? Because we should get some clarity on the Ravens within the next I don't know ten weeks of football here. But the Pats, man, they get three touchdowns out of Drake May, and so I gotta ask you: number one, were you happy about this? Um. Okay. So, d- real disclaimer: I know I talked to you about it during the week, but I was pissed that they were <laughs> starting him against the Texans. Yep. Because last week against Miami was the play, mm-hmm. and I was like, why? He's just gonna go get murdered. Mm-hmm. And then, and I was half correct. He ate four sacks and got picked off twice. Yeah, and he got brutalized on those sacks too. It wasn't just it, like a little going down. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like he ran out of probably two or three more sacks. Yeah, yep. 
He's he's well, very he's quite elusive for a guy that big. But yeah. dude, I I know you saw the meme somewhere on Instagram of they showed well who's the other quarterback you guys have? Well, they got Jacoby Brissett who's a big dude. Then they've also got the backup quarterback that was the runner. The, fair- the kid from the kid from Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. very good and he's yeah. ripped, dude. He is a man. Was, dude, that guy I think he was like I want to say it was like Milton or something. Like he, yeah, Milton. Dude, that's who it is. Yep. The dude in the preseason was just like crushing. He was tearing it up, dude. Tearing it up. And then they show Drake May and they're like, so these are two men that can get hit in the NFL. This is the boy that's coming in now. And they show like small Drake May, a picture of him on the beach. And I'm like, yo, he's going to get crushed. But Drake May is Drake May is like six, four. I know. I know. He's 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 a big big dude. dude. Yeah. They, they say he's like better, like has a better, uh, prototype than josh allen but i don't know that remains to be seen you know what was nice as a patriots fan to watch what this was the first time this season we threw the ball down the field yeah that 40 yard pass and that was against uh stingley that was not a bad cornerback at all so he he threaded that right in there that was that was a nice he did throw some darts yeah um you know he very much looked like a rookie but like you know a little promise i'll take it Okay, man. Well, I'm I'm happy for you. It gives you yeah. something to be happy about. Yeah. Uh, I would like. I hope. I just hope that he survives the rest of the season. Yeah, he's we'll gonna see. Keep getting killed behind that offensive line. Yeah, and if they're not doing much, for the love of God for for the high draft pick that we get. If we don't draft linemen, I'm I'm gonna lose it. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Well, lose you it. missed out on Joe Alt because Joe Alt would have been a real nice one for you this year. Um, and yeah, he's boy, he's boy. destroying the league too. Yeah. yeah, he's a big boy. I know. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's move on because this is one that I've really – I didn't message you about it this weekend, but this is one I really wanted to message you about. Detroit destroying Dallas. Like, I, I just want to talk about this for a few minutes, right? Like, yeah, it was definitely a payback game. And MCDC remembers when CD Lamb last year was waving at Detroit. Remember that, sure that game last year where they shouldn't have won and it was like, oh no, they didn't, the lineman didn't report, but he really did. And it was like uh, such a controversy. The ref didn't hear him and stuff. Dude, what they did to Dallas, it was personal, man. Yeah. They ran a hook and ladder with Panay Sewell. Oh. They got called back. Yeah. They got called back. It, it was just like, yeah. But that's just disrespectful, man. Like our 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 position guys that we have, they're so good. We're not going to run them with this. Like we're going to end up doing no. this. So I just I don't know, man. Like watching D- Detroit looks very good this year. Um, I don't yeah. see the hangover with them that I have with past uh, Super Bowl losing teams or AFC AFC or NFC Championship losing teams. Uh, yeah. So I really like their uh their promise that they have this year but i don't understand as much as they did against dallas there i'm not sure dallas is a great team this year uh but the worst part was losing. i don't understand how they're three i don't understand how dallas is three and three yeah i i don't either man that's confusing but well they played some bad teams that's the thing so uh but the worst part undoubtedly was uh losing aiden hutchinson and just super rough man like he's been the leader of that defense you don't replace a guy like that. Um, no. But I really would like to see them go after a guy like possibly Miles Garrett or someone like that. You know, Cleveland's awful right now. I'd love to see them go and, and throw a bag at him and see like, hey, what can we get for this guy? Can we can we get can we win it this year? Can we do it? Because they have a team that is capable of winning a Super Bowl this year. They do. Um, they they do. Ru- they run the ball very well. Goff has. A boatload of experience. Jamison Williams looks like a dude. He really does, man. Like sure does. So th- he looks like the number one pick. Hmm. I don't want to say that yet, but he's starting to remind people of why he was picked in the first round. Yeah. So. I, I, to go to go back to the. To the Hutchinson injury. First of all, yeah. that injury was gross. Yeah, it really like, was. I, I didn't. I turned away. I didn't see it. I. I. I don't want to see it. Refusing to um to replay it. Yeah. Good. Good. Shout out to them for for doing that because yeah. that's just 
sad. Like, you, I, like, I didn't get to see it live. So I was watching that game live, but I didn't get to see it happen. Mm-hmm. Because, again, they just refused to reshoot. So, like, I had to, like, dig through the internet to find it. It's, <laughs> it was a, it's a gross injury. I, yeah. I promise you. Um, I think they're going to be okay. Here's why. Because I don't think they're going to get somebody like Miles Garrett. Yep. But I think you could get somebody like uh, like Jadavian Clowney from Carolina. Like, you, yeah, you just need somebody like that. Like, okay. And I, I think if they don't get somebody, I think they're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I, like, sure, losing Hutchinson really hurts. Yeah. He was on. He was going to have a career year. He was already at seven and a half sacks. I know, dude. I, that's like a season for some guys. And he had yeah. seven and a half through five and a quarter games. I don't know if you saw what Dan Campbell said yesterday. No, no, I didn't. But he said, uh, depending on, like, he's like, I wouldn't be surprised if Hutch came back at some point this season. He's like, if we make it to the NFC title game or the Super Bowl, we, uh, he could come back maybe. Oh, man. I mean, that's a gruesome injury, man. That's a four-month injury. That's a, uh, that's a four-month injury. I mean. So, November, December, January, Fe- they would have to make the Super Bowl. They'd have to make the Super Bowl for him to could maybe you, come back. Could you imagine, dude? Could you imagine? Yeah. I just, oh, man. It would be incredible. It really yeah. would. Oh, but man. I, I just want to talk about Detroit real quick just because they, offensively right now, what they're doing is just nuts. Yeah. Like, they're running for 160 yards a game, and they're thrown for, like, 300 a game. Like, yeah. And they have so many guys that can run it and catch and like line up as a receiver. Well, they have so much that they do differently, right? Like Montgomery and Gibbs are completely different running backs, but both very yeah. good. You've got the best offensive line in football, no question. You've got Amon Ra, who's there, you're kind of your PPR guy, right? Like he can catch it in between the chains. He's going to get you that first down. You got Jamison Williams who can stretch the field. And then you've got Laporta over the middle that is just Dude, he's a matchup nightmare for people. You saw the long touchdown run he had. It's, he's insane. And dude. that was the only catch he had. Yeah, and that was, was the, the trick play. Had. That was the trick yeah. play. What was it? And, 52 yards, something like that? Crazy. Yeah. And Amon Ra only had four for 37 and a touchdown. W- which is unreal because he yeah. never has less than like 75 yards and seven, eight catches a game. Like yeah. it just, it's, it's crazy. I mean, since he's come into the league, he's lit the league on fire. I love watching Amon Ra, man. He's so much fun to to watch. Um, But you know what's interesting, man? Don't look now, but that division, you got – Detroit's not even the top team in their division. Well, that's why this week coming up, they're playing Minnesota, and that's going to be a huge matchup. Dude, every team in that division, though, is 4-2. and Yep. Every team is 4-2. and It's crazy, man. Or 4-2. and I'm sorry. 4-2 and are better in that division. That's the first time that's ever happened since the new divisional format in 2002. Dude, it's like the new AFC North, right? Yeah. It's it's insane. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know, man. Um, I, I think you're going to learn a lot about Detroit this week in that Minnesota game. I definitely think so, too. Because that's a game they have to get up for. Yep. And, and I, I'm curious to see because they could, you could tell the Cowboys game was a get-up game for them. And I'm, I'm hoping that's not like a – a letdown for them. Do you know who might oh. be coming back this week? There, cool. There's a chance. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't. I didn't read whether they activated him to the, the active practice squad and stuff, but he's been working on coming back as TJ Hawkinson. Imagine Woo! playing against his former team. Like that could be that could be big. But I'm gonna make one little prediction and I just want to shift gears real quick. I know it wasn't pretty for Burrow and the Bengals on Sunday against the Giants. In fact, it was kind of ugly to watch. Um, but I think the Bengals win their next three in a row. I think they're winnable games. Now, one of those games is Philly, but I think they can win that game. Um, but if they win their next three in a row, they're yeah. going to play Baltimore in Week 10. And that is going to be an epic Thursday night football matchup absolutely epic and i'm telling you bro like i've said it before i'm gonna say it again i will die on a hill with with this team this is a team that no one wants to play in the playoffs no team in the afc or nfc for that matter would sit there and say like oh yeah i want to play against burrow and you know come playoff time 
They just yeah. don't, dude. Like this team just elevates during the playoffs and they play better. Oh, they can't stop the run. They remind me a lot of the Colts, dude. How the old Colts teams that used to just it was like, okay, we're gonna win a bunch of games during the season. It's, it may not be pretty, but if we make the playoffs, our defense is all of a sudden going to be completely different. We're going to stop the run. We're going to do all of this stuff. And, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to win. Uh, I just – I don't know. I, I'm telling you, man, I that could be an incredible Week 10 matchup. Now, it could go really bad, and the Bengals could lose all three of these next games in a row. But yeah. my prediction is they win three, and it's going to set up a very nice Thursday night football matchup. I hope you're so, right because what I watched from Sunday night, man, was not pretty. No, it wasn't. But the Giants have oh, played very well as of recent, and that's without Malik Neighbors, by the way. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, Daniel Jones doesn't look half bad, man. Yeah, people love to hate on that guy. I just, dude, I'm just keep going, Dan. Keep doing it, man. I so he was at the point where I almost thought about it. I had to. Um, Oh, it was in the Bennett League. I needed I needed a starting QB a couple last week. And I almost I almost thought about it for a Yeah, you, yeah. It's not a bad he used to be though. he used to be a viable option, but um yeah. as Al mentioned, you know, Detroit and Minnesota, listen, that has the makings of a classic game. Um so does a few of the games we have on the slate this week. You got Houston yeah. and Green Bay. That could be just an epic Epic game between, you know, they're going to, the storyline is going to be obviously love versus Stroud and, and all of that stuff. But I just, I think it's going to be Green Bay's defense has been amazing this year. They've been, they've gotten at least two takeaways in every single game. Xavier McKinney for, has been awesome yeah. for them. I think for Green Bay, this is a measuring stick game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think this is a, you need to think, you need to see if you, are legit this year mm -hmm. or like you're just going to beat up on some like bad teams. Yeah. Um, and I don't necessarily think they have to win this game, but I'd like to see them be competitive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, you're right. A good, a good way to say that is measuring stick. Uh, you also got Kansas city at San Francisco, Super Bowl rematch, um, you which know, doesn't just, have the yeah. makings of it without McCaffrey there. It just doesn't feel the same. And Mahomes hasn't been playing great this year. No. Like, I know Kansas City's 5-0, and oh, but, like... But they're going to get up for it this game. I, I I know. It should be a good... I wonder I if San, the, San Francisco beats them. I think the 49ers are going to get up for this game. Yeah. Well, the, the next one is one I'm kind of interested about. Because Baltimore at Tampa Bay... Now, hear me out on this. Like, this could be the week that Baltimore gets beat. And, and, and yeah. just just hear me out. Tampa Bay has been playing now. Granted, New Orleans has been tanking. It seems like recently they started off very hot. Everyone was crowning them. Oh, they're making the playoffs. This and that. Now they're two and four. But Tampa Bay, they're playing pretty good defense, and that offense can hang with anybody, dude. Anybody. The way Godwin and Godwin and Evans is playing right now, and the way Baker's going, bro, like. Baker is making some throws, bro. <laughs> like, you know, things that worry me a little bit about that is Baker kind of regressed back to old Baker this past this past weekend. He had that second quarter where they were up seventeen nothing. He threw three picks in the second quarter. Yeah, not all of them were his fault. Some of them look kind of bad, but he still had himself a day. They put up fifty one points, bro. Yeah. Like. It like was, they they ran the they, they ran the ball in the second half. Yeah, and this is a this is two teams that just run the ball really well. Yep. And I really yeah this is this is the game I'm kind of really looking forward to. Yeah, B Bucky Irving is coming on. I don't know if you saw much of him, but he's really yeah. been coming on this year as a rookie for Tampa Bay, uh, and he's looking good. But Godwin, I, I was telling people, man, him going back to the slot that's a big deal, and he had an epic day this last week, just an epic day. So, um, let's move on to, to fantasy, right? Like you're still alive in guillotine. How are you feeling in there, man? Uh, good, good. I didn't really, I didn't have to sweat that out in guillotine, which was nice. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to sweat it out a little bit this week. Cause I have one of my running backs on a buy. Mm -hmm. Who's that? So that's, um, Swift. Okay. Have, uh, Who's yeah. actually been coming on real well lately. The last few weeks, he started off very slow, but he's been very good the last few weeks. Yep. Yeah, I put up 133 this week in uh, guillotine. So yeah, I saw the yeah. big points. Well, I yeah. I also want to say we need to get this man a crown. 
He got his yeah, first. He got finally. his first win in the Bennett League, baby. Woo! So I, go win this. I thought I was gonna pull a Cleveland Browns, and I, I, woof. Yeah, pulled defeat yeah. out of the jaws of victory. No, he clenched really those did. jaws down and said, "Yeah, clenched the jaws, clenched the cheeks, and got his first win." I had to sweat it out though for Monday Night Football. Yeah, that's you know, that's the way it goes. Usual. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always sweating out for Monday Night Football. It seems. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> it happens that way sometimes. I would like to just watch Monday Night Football and just enjoy it for once, and, and, and not, not have, yeah, yeah, not be stressed. That'd be nice. That'd be so nice. Could be real cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um. Anything else you wanted to mention today? No, no. You're still in guillotine as well. Yeah. What are your other leagues doing? Listen, I so in my other league that my buddy begged me to join. I'm the top team in the league now. <laughs> So I'm five and one. I'm just, I'm literally crushing people and it's, it feels very good. Um, there was one guy that dropped JK Dobbins and I snagged him for a ton of fab. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, he didn't mean to do that and stuff. We got to send that back. And I'm like, dude, I'm a shark. I said, the bigger question you should be asking is what is wrong with the people in this league that did not bid on JK Dobbins? How come I was the only one, you know? So I don't know. Interesting, but my Wait, did you have to get, did you have to give him back? Yeah, I gave him back. I'm a good sport, oh, right? Like I'm not trying I'm not trying to be a shark, you know? Like uh, I I figured Wait, did you pay money into to be in this league? Yeah. Then no, be a shark. Yeah, no. uh-uh. I Listen, uh-uh. listen, I'm giving don't the I'm giving the uh, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to people, right? Um so The, the thing is this. The thing is this. To drop somebody it asks you multiple times if you're sure. Yeah. Yeah. He also dropped Sam Laporta too, and then had him put back on his roster. So in the same like right after JK Dobbins. I didn't have a chance to bid on Laporta or else I would have. <laughs> so but yeah, very interesting. So uh, but my other uh, leagues, I, I lost in the Bennett League this week by just a little bit, which was too bad. Uh, my own personal league, I, I'm I'm doing all right in there too. I'm top team in the league as well, so feeling good about that. And uh, yeah, we're we're trying to keep keep rising. Uh, I always feel like Willie Creeman, the the cream always rises to the top. So, yeah. but uh, let's give them with a trivia real quick. Last week we said uh, when is the last time Atlanta had a quarterback throw for 500 yards, and the answer on that before our boy Kirk Cuckins did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in 2016. Yeah, 503 yeah. yards. So, good old yeah. Matt Ryan. So That was uh that season uh that season was a good season for him. It was. It was a very yeah. good season for him. Yeah. Um and uh if not for the Patriots cheating, they might have won the Super Bowl. So, um You understand how we cheated on that one. Yeah. Okay. I I don't we'll I don't know. I don't think you know Edelman did something. I don't I don't know. <laughs> you mean the greatest catch of all time in the Super Bowl? Or? Yeah, Edelman is uh man, he is so funny. I keep sending you those clips of him impersonating Belichick. It is the funniest <laughs> thing. <laughs> if, <laughs> do yourself a favor and go check those out, guys. He is uh, he is hilarious when he's impersonating Belichick. It is too funny. Not to mention a guy we went to to high school with. Uh, runs his podcast. So a yeah. uh, little yeah. shout out to Kyler. He's uh, he's doing his thing. So he's he's a big fish. We're small fish right now. So, yeah. um, but did you have another question you want to give him this week or, or are we going to hold off? You froze there for a second. I ah, I was going to say, did you have another question you want to give them this I week? Do. or Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, what do you got? So, uh, Mets Dodgers in the NLCS. Um, you know, that's currently going on. Mm-hmm. When's the last time that series happened in the playoffs? Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, make sure you go ahead and drop that in the comments below. Let's see what you guys got. Uh, I wonder if my dad's going to answer that one. He might know. Uh, but um, other than that, guys, it's a wrap for this week. Uh, we won't be back next week. We don't think maybe we'll, pop- we're, we're still, yeah, we'll we'll still try to get a World Series preview in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. We're that out. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna figure something out. But yeah. uh, listen, have fun this week. Enjoy some football. Enjoy some baseball. And yeah. uh, yeah, I love you, brother. Yeah, I am. I'm going to Vegas. So yeah, you're you're yeah. about to have yourself a good time. So sure am. Oh man, sure am. Well, we will catch you on the flip side, bro. Yes, sir. All right, you take care. Peace. Right. Peace.